Yeah, what's up guys? Today we have a driveway install of probably the best looking billet aluminum arm I've ever seen. So this is from Davison, fully adjustable. I'll give you guys the whole rundown and installation, but I'm gonna be slapping these babies on in the driveway. So let's get to it. package from Davison. Here they are. Brand new billet upper control arms. Uh, adjustable, um, lifetime bushings and everything like that. I'll get into the specs later, but guys, super pumped to have all Davison everything on the truck. I'll tear down the truck and show you guys actually how to put on arms. It's pretty easy, honestly. This is my third set of uppers and these are by far the strongest and best looking and have the most adjustability. All right, guys, real quick, special announcement. I'm gonna to step to the side. Um, Arc Off Road is now officially live. So previously I had some merch on another website, um, but they closed down. They were doing all my merch for me. So now I'm fully doing my own merch, my own designs, everything. And right here you can see it on the screen. So if you wanna to go to arcoffroad.com, I have tons of stickers, some patches, some shirts. I've already really sold very well, so get in there while you can and buy some stuff if you want to support the channel. So, enough about that. Let's talk about these arms because they're just so killer. Actually, I just thought before I get into the specs and features of these arms, I'm gonna lay a little bit of context as to why I'm changing um, my previous arms for these arms. So this is actually my third set of uppers. The first set were Camberg, Uniball, and where I live, I think it just, I had to maintain those all the time. The Uniballs were squeaky and loud and annoying. The bushings were super annoying to grease and all that stuff. And they didn't have any adjustment at all for caster and camber. They would just set it and forget it. So all the adjustment was done in the lower. Then when I went to 35s, I got the SPC upper control arms. That's what I have now. And they do have a lot of adjustability and hardly any maintenance, which is a super good thing. I mean, I really do like those arms, but I think these have more camber adjustment. I think I can really back these out and push these in for camber adjustment, which the uh, SPCs only have this little slot that goes back and forth. There's maybe half, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that. Also with the SPCs, where I live, we don't have hardly any good um, off-road shops, especially off-road alignment or suspension shops. So I had to figure this stuff out a lot of my own. And no one will touch the, uh, the ball joints on the SPCs and actually fine tune and get a good off-road alignment, which is really annoying. So I'm tired of fighting that battle. And that's kind of why I got these because this is easy to adjust on the truck just for camber in and out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is max the lowers all the way forward um, to get as much positive caster as I can and then dial the rest in with this right here for my camber. That's kind of the reason. Also the other reason is billet. Billet looks rad. Everything on my truck is raw aluminum or billet or whatever so it matches and all dobbles and everything. All right, so here's what you get when you order these arms. Uh, box right here, it's packed in this nice foam. Yada yada instructions, which have pictures. And if you haven't installed upper control arms, don't be intimidated. It's really not that bad. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, what you're doing is not really that complicated. So then you have two caps for the ball joint up here that you press in. Not with the press, just lightly tapping it. And then your hardware bag. So if you see these little spacers right here, see this little guy right here? There's one there and one there. There's one spacer per arm. And previously when I got these, I thought these are only adjustable for camber, which is in and out. But the little spacer actually is an adjustment for caster, which I don't think many people know about these arms because it's not really um, displayed on there. Uh, on their description. So anyway, that spacer, what you can do is put it here or here for two or three degrees of caster. Um, so that's how you can actually adjust your, your caster and it's just set and forget, right? Once you put it in there, you can't, you know, you need to take it all out if you're gonna, they're gonna change that. But for most lifts, for 
you know, 35s or whatever, um, they recommend doing the, the three degrees of caster, which I totally agree with. Anyway, the last point of adjustment, which is the, the shining star of this thing, is the amount of uh, camber adjustment you can do. So you can see, look at that adjustment. Super, super long. I think it goes more too. But anyway, that comes out, and then this is the jam nut in here that locks it in place. So very simple, and once this is on the truck, all you gotta do is get a wrench. Okay, sick, there goes the wind. Uh, all you gotta do is get a wrench and adjust this while it's on the truck. Not bad at all. Um, I think it's, it's too tight right now, but you move one of these and the whole, the whole thing shifts in and out. If I didn't say already, these are billet forged aluminum, and then this ball joint is kinda like a factory style ball joint. It's sealed, um, you don't need to there's like no maintenance, literally is no maintenance. So you put these on the truck, they're done. You know, the more the more things you add to your truck, the more things you have to maintain. This is just one thing less. You know, if you wanna have some peace of mind and just get in your truck and go, these arms are sweet. So look at there, you can see how it's threaded all the way to there. Um, and then these bushings are kind of like a factory style bushing. So they, uh, they don't have any, they're not greasable or anything like that. So they're gonna last forever. Last thing I mentioned a second ago, here's those little caps and whatever orientation like that. You'll just kind of tap them in. So yeah, let's do it, man. These things are awesome. All right, it's a new day. Uh, didn't get to it yesterday. So I have the truck pulled into the garage kind of as much as I can to get out of the wind. But um, yeah, let's get started. By the way, I'm just going to do this one off camera, the driver's side. Uh, that way I can film everything just smooth on the other side. So, just gonna crack the lug nuts first, and then put the jack under there, and do the rest. I'm also gonna pop the hood so I can fish that bolt through. So I'm doing this to obviously get the tires off, but I want to have the front suspension droop so you can get in there and take it on more. Take it in the air now. Yeah. This is just a habit of mine, but I always put my spare underneath right here by the cab mount. Just for whatever reason, if the jack fails, I'm gonna fall all the way to the ground. Actually, I should get my jack stands out. All right, very first thing, we're gonna take out these little clip nut deal thingies on the arc splash shield so I can get in there and get to the bolt back there. So I have this behind the reservoir mount back here. I don't really wanna drop this mount, so I'm gonna see if I can loosen all these and flop it over like that. Now I'm gonna take this little cotter pin out from the castle nut. All right, actually I wanna say this is a 22 mil, but I don't have that. I have a uh, 7 8 which works for me. I'm gonna do that and then get a, give it a couple whacks right there to break loose. Got those separated. Now, I'm gonna find a place to tie this thing up. Also, my new little man says, hey. <laughs> so, let's get this thing fixed. All right, so we're gold. All I did was, um, I had a zip tie right here that was holding the brake line on. And uh, I think there's a bracket right here you can use, but I just zip tied that previously, so I cut that. And then I wrapped this around the coil to hang the knuckle. So next, we just need to get this bolt out. 
I know, buddy. But first, we're gonna go see the little guy. All right, Henry, I'm only gonna tell you this once. This is what the parts look like, okay? That's your coil. Okay, that's your upper, the black part. That's the wheel spacer. You paying attention? Next up, we're gonna get this long bolt out of here. So if you see right there in the corner, there's some sheet metal, you've probably seen, I've done this, like I said, this is my third pair of uppers, but I've moved that sheet metal back and forth a few times. It's very easy. I highly recommend you don't cut the bolt and just take it out the easy way. It's not that hard to get in and out. It just takes some finagling and mostly right here. I forget which side of the truck's harder, but one of them's a little bit harder. But anyway, you just need to pry that sheet metal out so the bolt can go that way. And really quick, make sure that um, the, the bolt is going down like this and your nut is at the bottom. I accidentally installed it the other way once with the, the nut up here and it literally backed out and the whole uh, bolt here came out of that sleeve and was like this and my, my arm was like mega, mega sketch. And my buddy, he uh, ratchet strapped, we did a trail fix and it was awesome. So he saved the day there. But anyway, it isn't just me talking. I've seen other people do this as well. Well, they'll put it the other way. So make sure your nut is back here. So in the case it does fall off and back out, it's, you know, gravity is going to keep it actually, the arm actually in where it's supposed to be. So anyway, right here, got a 19 and I have my square tube cheater bar. So I think I can actually go ahead and start doing this and not even hold a wrench over there. Yeah, see, it's not even moving, so. Okay, see all that slack now that we got? So, the other thing, see these washers? I'll tell you again when we put it in the, uh, when you install it finally. Oh, it's actually spinning over there. Anyway, keep these washers, you're gonna use them. All right, so we got the nut off of this side and you can see the bolt right here. It's a long boy. So, I also peeled up this sheet metal again and you can see where it's gonna have to be backed out. So it's really hard to show in video. Well, maybe I'll try real quick. Sorry, my engine's dirty. There's this crazy mud puddles all over the mall for some reason. So I don't know, weird. See right there in between those two, that bracket and that hose, the bolt is gonna go all the way like back to there and you'll pull it up through the top. Update got that thing out really wasn't bad remember take a get some pliers and bend that thing up and then i didn't do this the previous couple times i put new arms on but i uh there's a, like three 10 millimeters holding this on so just to make my life a little easier i uh, unbolted those three and then there's one right there for that little bracket thing um and then also did these two 10 millimeters so it's uh it's all 10 millimeters it's very quick and easy just to take all this off and then I pull the bolt right through there up and out so wasn't too bad so now it's time to put the good stuff on all right let's check out the instructions so the first part of these instructions talk about ball joint installation in my case, they were already pressed in. They might come pressed in, I'm not really sure, but if it doesn't look like that, it's obviously not pressed in. So this one's good to go, so we'll skip that step. All right, this for camber is setting for a baseline to start at 39 millimeters. So just like that in the picture, you wanna space, oops, you wanna space these out 39 millimeters. And then it says to lock it in. So right here, there'll be a bolt that goes through here and that actually clamps down this whole thing. So this will set the, the jam nut or whatever to keep it go, from going in and out and this will actually clamp the whole assembly to make it super tight. Before we do that, we're gonna make sure these are 39 mils um, on both sides so it'll equally go in and, and that rod will kind of go in nice and straight. So uh, obviously this is the passenger side. Your ball joint's gonna be more towards the, uh, the cab of the truck. So you can make sure you get the right one in there. Dang boys, it's gonna look dope. So pumped. All right, so now that I know what I'm talking about here, this is adjusted to 39 mils and I did actually go ahead and lock this down. What you're gonna do is move this guy, the one on the inside and 
this is actually, when you adjust this, this is what's actually going to move the whole arm out. So, just measure that with the exact same way you're doing there, 39 mils, and then put that back onto itself to keep it tight. Alright, I just verified and watched Exit Off-Road's install video, but I, uh, I did these at 40 mil just because it's easier to see. There's 40 mil exactly, just like that. And 40 on that one. So those are our baseline. Make sure that side of the bushing is towards the back of the car and that side of the bushing is towards the front. You see they're different. So this arm is pretty much ready to go in. So I've got the bolts in here, it's loose. 39 mils, bushings to the outside. Got the arm, or sorry, the uh, big old bolt going through here. We wanna make sure this goes back on the outside. This flat side goes to the outside. So it's gonna go like this. And then the little spacer, which is here, will go on the rear of the vehicle for three degrees of caster. Honestly, guys, I'm very confused on so in the instructions, it says if you put it in the front, you get two degrees of caster, but it moves the wheel slightly more forward, which is what I'm after. This says it will give you three degrees of caster and that's it. I guess I'm gonna keep it on this one. Just That's what I've been told to do, so we'll do that. Let's see if I can get it lined up here. Probably gonna have to go from the top and push it. There it goes. All right. Dude. She's going. Oh, this is awesome. There it is. Sweet. And that's gonna go to the outside just like that. Radical. Now we're gonna crank the ever living crap out of it. No, I'm just kidding. So you're gonna wanna torque this once it's on the ground to spec, which I don't remember what it is. There's a bolt for this, which actually, I think, here it is. Um, I think you use the OE bracket, and I do not have the OE bracket, so if I just sink this bolt in there and zip tie it or something, but I don't have the original bracket. All right, now I'm going to come over here before I put these in and put a little grease on them. Get some grease. Go around this O-ring here. Also, if y'all haven't seen... Get your ARC shirt at arcoffroad.com. Okay, we're almost there. There's a groove right there. Oh yeah, there's a groove right here. So I guess if you just get that lined up. Yeah. Okay. She's in. Take this off. Oops. Now we're gonna lose our nut. Put our castle nut up there. Make sure you try to damage the threads when they go in. Just kidding, just kidding. Castle nut. Official torque specs. It is 81 here and 85 here. But again, don't do these till they're on the ground and the suspension settles. So, we're gonna get this. I'm gonna put it through this way so I can get it out easy next time. Sweet, arm is on. Also, they send these two little tools for the alignment shop or whoever to get in here and actually turn the this bolt down here. And then you get some stickies. You gotta get stickies. If you don't get stickies, it's not even real. What even these say? Left hand side. Left hand side. So now I'm just gonna tighten this just snug. Obviously, last thing, put your splash shield back on. Uh, zip tie this thing out of the way. And go get an alignment. So, cool. I'm gonna do the other side off camera because there's no point in filming it. Just the same thing. Um, and then, um, yeah, when I finish that, I'll close out the video and that'll be it. All right, guys, we got everything aligned. Everything's good to go. Um, 
first of all, I, uh, I started editing this video and I apologize for the wind noise. It's probably windy right now. So sorry for that. Um, didn't have my mic with me and so hopefully that was bearable. Anyway, got it all on, adjusted, aligned, looks amazing. Camber is really nice. I'll show you my spec sheet in a second. Everything's awesome. I feel like I have a good amount of clearance here. And I'll show you the specs here. I don't have my other paper from the old SPCs, but the old SPCs I had, I swear, I had 1.5 degrees caster here and like 2.2 degrees caster here. So yeah, that was the old arms. Um, this is the new arms with no adjustment at all. So just like I slapped them on the truck. And then this is the new uh, alignment here. So running 4.3 on driver's side, 3.2 passenger side, zero camber, basically zero camber there. I'm very happy with this alignment. So super, super stoked. Pretty crazy I had that high of a caster before I did it, but um, or before I got the alignment, but yeah, super happy with this.